Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Microsoft Cloud BDI series. Um, we're about, <clears throat> this is episode 10 within the, within the ABD um, element. I've, I've already covered Microsoft DevBox, I've already covered Windows 365, I'll put the links down in the description. Um, so we were talking about security in the last episode, <clears throat> we kind of started talking about ABD security recommendations. So we're going to do the second part of that, then we're going to do a demo as well. So without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So this is a Microsoft Cloud BDI series, um, and we're, this is part two of the ABD security recommendations. So first we'll talk about recommended security boundary scenarios. don't know why you can't see the word scenario, um, but then we're going to do a demo around published apps as well. Uh, so let's start off by talking about the recommended security boundary scenario. <clears throat> you, so you'll also need to make you need to make certain choices about security boundaries on a case by case sort of basis. An example here is if if a user in your organisation needs local administrator privileges to install apps, you need to give them sort of personal desktop instead of a shared ho shared host. Uh, Microsoft don't recommend giving users local admin privileges in multi session pool scenarios because these users then can can sign unfortunately cross security boundaries for sessions or on TFS data permissions. They can shut down multi-session VMs or do things that could interrupt service for other users and cause data loss as well. Users from the same organization like knowledge workers with apps that don't require admin privileges are great candidates for multi-session hosts like Windows 11 Enterprise multi-session. Uh, these session hosts um, include sort of, um, sort of hosts with reduced costs for your organization because multiple users can share a single VM. Uh, the only sort of overhead cost um, of, a, of a, a VM per user. We use the profile management, and we're going to we're going to talk a lot about profile management further on the, in, the, in the set in the sort of series. Products like FS Logics, which we'll be talking about, users can be assigned any VM in a host pool without sort of noticing any sort of service interruptions. And this feature also lets you optimize costs by doing things like shutting down VMs during off-peak hours. And so that's like the old sort of roaming profile which FS Logics can facilitate. Um, if your situation requires users from sort of different organizations to connect to your deployment, Microsoft recommend you have a sort of separate tenant for identity services like Azure Directory and Microsoft Onter ID. Uh, Microsoft also recommend you have a separate subscription for those users for hosting Azure resources like AVD and VMs. Um, I don't believe guest users are supported with AVD, so um, can't use that. Uh, continuing on that, that sort of uh, recommended security boundary scenarios, in many cases, multi-session is an acceptable way to reduce cost, but whether, whether Microsoft recommend it depends on the trust level between um, users with simultaneous access to shared multi-session instances. Typically, users that belong to the same organization have sufficient and agreed upon trust relationship. An example here is a department or work group where people collaborate. You can access each other's personal information in an organization with a high trust level. Windows uses security boundaries and controls to ensure user processes and data are isolated between sessions. However, Windows still provides access to the instances uh, the user is working on. Uh, Multi-session deployments uh, would benefit from uh, sort of a security in depth strategy that adds more security boundaries that prevent users within and outside of the organization from getting unauthorized access um, to other users' personal information. Unauthorized data access happens because of an error in the configuration process by the system admin, such as undisclosed security vulnerabilities or sort of no security vulnerabilities uh, that hasn't been patched uh, patched yet. Microsoft do not recommend granting users that work for different or competing companies access to the same multi-session environment. These scenarios have several security boundaries that can be attacked or abused like network, kernel, process, user, or sessions. We saw some of those in, in the table in the last video. A single security vulnerability can cause unauthorized data and credential theft, personal information leaks, identity theft, or other issues. Virtualized environment providers are responsible for offering well-designed systems with sort of multiple strong security boundaries and extra safety measures enabled wherever possible. And finally, so reducing these potential threats requires uh, fault-proof configuration, patch management design process, and regular patch de uh, deployment schedules. It's better to follow principles of defense in depth and keep environments separate. 
so <clears throat> this table summarizes sort of Microsoft's recommendations on the scenario that we just spoke about. So with users in one organization with standard privileges, use Windows Enterprise Multi-Session Operating System. Um, for, for trust level scenarios where user requires the ministry privileges, use personal host pools and assign each user with their own session host. And then users from different orgs, um, separate as your tenant and as your subscription as well. Okay, we're gonna jump into the demo now. Um, and in the demo, we're gonna actually look at configuring and deploying a published app. So please join me in the Azure tenant. So we're back in my MIT Geek portal, Azure portal. Um, we're gonna add a remote app to our host pool. So let's go to host pool. Let's go to our demo ABDHP host pool. I'm gonna to go to application group. So we've got our VM, which we're able to connect to. And we're actually gonna, so we've got our desktop application. We're actually gonna create a remote app one. So, um, got the same description, same resource group, the host phone location are grayed out, so we can't can't change that, the metadata or anything like that. But again, remote app group, we can only have one desktop in, in per, per host phone, so we've got a remote app option here. Let's just call this um, demo-wrap for remote app. Go to applications now. Um, obviously, my VM needs, your VM needs to be turned on if you want to add an application from uh, the VM, so let's add an application. Now for application store, we've got an option of either app attach, start menu, or file path. So just do start menu, and it'll show me all the applications that are installed on my virtual machine. So we can go Excel, Firefox, Google Chrome. Uh, let me see if no, let's just do Notepad, that's a nice easy one. Um, and then you can actually click on require command line if you want to put any sort of command line stuff in there. Um, just go to next, if you want to put any specific icon in there. You know, I'm just going to leave everything on default. I'm just trying to show the process of adding a, a remote app. And then go to next and then click on add. Uh, we need the assignment here. So let's assign that to, um, well, let's assign it to me so I can see it on mine. Uh, there I am. Uh, and make sure let's register it with our default workspace. Um, so it says there's already um, it says it's been registered, so fine with that. Let's go to advance. Any tags that I want to do, review and create. Add that validate. Once it's validated, we'll review and create. Click on create, and that will then create the uh, remote app for us in our host pool. So now that's been added, what I want to show is actually to show that it works. I've got my IMIT gig workspace here. This is my... Um, pool where I've got by, um, I've got a host pool in here. Um, if I click on apps, there we go. We can see my demo AVD workspace. We've got the notepad. We can double click that and launch it. And that'll be how my remote app works and how it looks. Um, so I just wanted to show the remote app process in the demo and how you can add that. We're kind of done with the sort of security element for now with regards to um, the, the security boundaries. We're going to do security best practices later on in, in the series. Um, so lots of useful links downstairs, downstairs, down in the description, not downstairs, down in the description of this video. Um, links to my membership, links to my LinkedIn, also links to the other sort of uh, parts of the series, including Windows 365 and the dev box as well. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, goodbye.